Let's welcome in now the host of the Rubin Report, Dave Rubin. He is the author of Don't Burn This Book, Thinking for Yourself in an Age of Unreason. He's back uh, from his Henry David Thoreau style sequestration in the woods someplace, no internet, no TV, getting caught up on the Afghan disaster, the CDC now, the uh, fourth branch of the U.S. government apparently, Dave. How are you coping? I mean, this is a lot. This is information overload coming back uh, from the dark. No, it really is. I just did a month off the grid with no phone, no social media, no news, no current events, no CNN, which is the greatest therapeutic thing that anyone can do for themselves. And I came back yesterday and I'm getting caught up on all of this. And suffice to say, yeah, you're right. It's just sort of endless disaster after endless disaster. You know, this Afghanistan thing, which, as I said, I'm just catching up on now. I mean, this strikes me as possibly the biggest foreign policy blunder, and I don't even know if that word is strong enough, uh, probably in the last 50 years. I mean, this is a disaster at absolutely every level, and it's still unfolding. And unfortunately, you know, as we often talk about on our Thursday chats, John, you know, we don't have a mainstream media that will hold the administration to account because they like the guy that's in office now. If it happened to be that orange guy we used to have, then they would be covering everything in a completely different way. So, you know, for me being gone and then coming back, it's like, okay, this Afghanistan disaster, and now everything that you just addressed about COVID, it's like, it's never going away. I mean, I think that that's what people need to understand. Yep. And what I mean by that is not necessarily COVID the virus. That, that will sort of always exist to some degree, but like the flu exists, like the common cold and everything else. But what I'm more concerned about is these people, like Walensky, who you're showing right there. The, the government people and these, these organizational people at the CDC, who, as you point out, are not elected, who want endless control of our lives to tell us what we can do on 4th of July and what we can do on Labor Day and when we can go to work and what birthday parties and funerals we can go to. Those of us that care about freedom, our work has never been more important because they are never going to stop. It is really that simple. You know, I know you came back yesterday, but I wish you could have seen it for a couple days there. There, there did seem to be some curiosity, at least from the press corps, to ask some pointed questions. But that, you know, has apparently evaporated. Yesterday's press briefing with the joint chair, uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and the defense secretary, you know, they were basically throwing softballs up there and, and giving these guys a platform to talk about whatever they want. There is no one in the press holding, you know, our leaders accountable right now. And going back to the CDC, you know, the press now is, is, is on to their next shiny object. Everyone's obsessed because Joe Rogan has apparently tested positive for COVID. And I think what's so telling about the coverage of this <coughs> is how excited everyone in the mainstream press yes. seems to be that Joe Rogan has caught COVID. Breaking news from CNN, they had to tweet this out. Joe Rogan has COVID using ivermectin. They say an unproven anti-parasite drug for treatment. Here's another one from The Hollywood Reporter. Joe Rogan says he tested positive for COVID-19, takes unproven horse dewormer. Well, first off, on the word unproven, I'm a little confused. Are the vaccines proven or unproven at I've this point? Dave, you know I just looked I mean? this up. It won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2015 for treating humans. And, you know, we've covered this. There's a doctor down in Broward County, Florida. He's been administering ivermectin under, a, um, you know, a medical trial. It is working for some folks. You know, people are taking it off the shelf, buying it from a, a feed store. You know, they're taking horse medicine. And that's what everybody in the press is focused on. Well, your original point there about the glee that the media has over this, that Joe Rogan got it. Now, it, I actually don't know, and if you do know, you can let me know, if Joe Rogan was vaccinated or not. I know he had said a while back that if you're young and healthy, you don't really need I to be vaccinated. I don't think he was vaccinated. I don't think he was. Fair enough. My position on this has always been that everyone should do what's right with, for them and their family and, you know, the people around them and make decisions that are right for you, whether that's vaccination, mask, anything else. But the glee, the fact that it's obvious that the media wants him not yep. only to have COVID because he was thought of as sort of an anti-vaxxer or just someone that was against the CDC and the, you know, the lords over at, uh, you know, Health and Human Services or whatever. Um, they want him to have it and they really want him to suffer from it. So the irony is they're tweeting all this stuff out. But so far, it sounds like he's taken some medications, done what he thinks is right. And I have no doubt that he's talking to his own medical professionals and he's not dead. I mean, the point is, he's a, I think he's about 50 years old, so he's a, you know, a middle-aged guy who's in pretty good shape. I mean, most of his life is, is spent working out, and he does right. all that UFC stuff and everything else. And he's doing what he thinks is right for himself. So I can tell you, John, a month away from this, when you come back and you just see 
how they're never going to let it go. They are, they are picking good guys and bad guys based on your feelings about vaccines when we know that, again, if Trump was president right now and the administration was pushing vaccines on everybody and vaccine passports and everything right. else, the media would be screaming exactly. that this is the worst assault on our freedoms ever. Right. Yeah, they did that for the vaccine. He talked about hydroxychloroquine. And again, these, you know, when doctors are saying that this stuff, you know, under certain circumstances for certain people might actually be effective, you would think the CDC would say, hey, look, there's a there's another arrow we can put in our quiver here to combat this, but they don't seem to care. It's only about the vaccine. They talk about it as an actuality. If you haven't been vaccinated yet, they act like you're definitely going to get vaccinated. Meanwhile, we wait. Uh, for more information as the effect. John, can I can yeah, I flip ahead, the script here and ask you a question, which is in the last month, did the mainstream media did say Washington Post or New York Times or CNN or MSNBC? Did any of them run any stories on general health? Let's say why eating right could make you healthier or were di dieting no, or never... exercise or maybe spending some time in the sauna or things of that nature, taking a walk, getting fresh air. Getting, yes, vitamin D. Do any of them do that? They don't talk about that. And, you know, I, we earlier we talked about the CDC's new guidance on inclusive language. You're not supposed to call them uh, drug abusers or addicts. You're supposed yeah. to call them people who use drugs or people who inject drugs. They're not homeless. They are persons seeking assistance for housing, stuff like that. You know, Look, if, if they actually, you know, instead of focusing on this woke stuff, Dave, and actually on the stuff that works and being honest with us, we'd be in a lot better position. But let's set that aside because I, I don't want to only talk about the negative here from your perspective. There is some good news out there. We have a front runner for the Republican challenger for Gavin Newsom, and that is Larry Elder, who's looking pretty strong right now. Um, we're also hearing that George Soros is getting involved, apparently scared here, a half a million dollars going to support Gavin Newsom. The money is coming out for Gavin Newsom. They must be scared of Larry Elder. Oh, the money's coming out for Gavin Newsom. And let's not forget that Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix, gave $3.1 million to Gavin Newsom. Um, look, the most important thing for anyone watching this that lives in California to know is on September 14th, you must vote yes on the recall. Look, Larry Elder is my guy. I think he is a great advocate for freedom and limited government and he wants kids back in schools and he wants school choice and he wants people to make decisions for themselves and he wants to lower taxes. And I get it, California is a deeply corrupt state and those are all going to be hard accomplishments to, to uh, complete. However, there is no one in their right mind in California that thinks that this state is being run correctly, whether it's the homelessness or the drug use or the unemployment or the high housing prices or the regulation. Everything is a disaster. So at the very least, let's move on from Newsom. If, if you're just, you know, you decide whether page. you think Larry's your guy. He's my guy. But at the very least, say goodbye to Gavin Newsom, who spent 20 grand on a bar bill at French Laundry while he locked the rest of us down. So the, yes, this is great news. And I'm going to devote my next 13 days or so to making sure that Larry Elder becomes the next governor of California. All right. Well, we will check in with you, of course. And it really is kind of amazing, you know, at the lack of accountability for people who fail in leadership positions in this day and age. Unbelievable stuff we're seeing. Dave Rubin, great to see you. You, we'll you see fail you. up if you're a lefty. That's, that's the way it works, apparently. We'll see you soon, Dave. Thanks so much. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.